Thank you, Jared. <clears throat> Thank you, Jared. Trust God, lock your car, and wipe off the microphone. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks to our team who pivoted so well this morning. Yeah, that squirrel. Um, I, I, at first service, I said a, swir a squirrel went to heaven today, but maybe it was sent by the devil. I don't know. Uh, we don't know where the squirrel went, but we don't care. But pg and has been here. We're back on. But we just thought we had so much fun in the first service that we would just continue out here. Um, and some of you have been asking for us to do that. So, hey, your prayer was answered. There you go. Yeah, put your hands together. Let's be happy. Thanks for coming out. So, uh, and the also in the first service, I have to be equitable and, and, and share the same thing. I was going to come out here and, and say, well, uh, the, the reason the PG&E is off is because y'all didn't tithe and we couldn't pay our bill. But that was stretching a little bit too far, and, you know, we're a church of grace, right? So I can't go there. <laughs> because I said so, you know, how many of us like to be told what to do? Nobody. We don't like to be told what to do. No one, it goes against our nature. And when somebody tells us to do something and it doesn't make sense to us, that just, that just sends us into orbit, sends me into orbit. And I think for a lot of us, that's what happens. You know, um, your parents or your grandparents, somebody said, uh, at some point in your life, you were doing something else. You were playing. You were watching TV. And they said, hey, it's time to dump out the trash. And you said, why? Why? My favorite show. This is a good part. I'm playing. I'm busy. And the response that just sends us crazy into craziness is because I said so. Right? It just rubs the cat the wrong way. But listen, when Jesus tells us to do something, when Jesus tells us that whether we understand it or not, there is blessing in obedience. You know, we don't always get it. You know, I, I, we still can look at that. And Jesus tells us, he says, I want you to love your neighbor. And you say, God, don't you know that my neighbor blasts the, their stereo and TV at three in the morning? I want you to forgive those that have mistreated you. What? Forgive what? No. But God always ties it to something greater and something more, and we will be blessed. And dare I say that we'll even find and discover our purpose if we will simply be obedient. Obedience is a blessing. You know, the Bible says in James chapter 1, unless we ask in faith, unless we're obedient in faith, don't bother asking anything from God because you're just not going to be in that spot. You know, I always say, uh, you know, you got to be in the spot where the, where the uh, near, there it is, it's coming, I'm a little, you know, a little slow, but you got to be near the spot where the glory comes out. <laughs> and that's where, that's where obedience puts you. It puts you up in a place where God can pour out. Second, if we can, if we can put our minds back one week and you were here and you, or you celebrated Easter somewhere and you remember the story of Thomas. When Thomas came to the realization who Jesus really was, a week after he'd been resurrected, and he, and he meets Jesus resurrected, and he bows his knee, and he says, my Lord and my God. How many in the room have bowed their knee to Jesus and said, my Lord and my God, right? You can show your hand if you want. You don't have to, but I'm just saying, if we have, then we're going to do what he says. And, and I was looking because... Luke chapter 6, verse 46, Jesus asked the question, why then do you call me Lord, Lord, if you're not going to do what I tell you to do? It just makes sense. Obedience, doing what he says and when he says it, is going to help us discover our purpose and make a difference in life. This morning, I want to read from you the story that was sort of the initiation of this of this uh, series, because I said so. And we're reading in Luke chapter 5. If you have your U versions open, you can look at it. Otherwise, just listen. Luke chapter 5, beginning of verse 1. One day, Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, in other words, the, the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding around him, and they were listening to the word of God. And he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore, and then he sat down, and he taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now put out into the deeper water, and let down the nets for a catch. 
And Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners from the other boat to come and help them. So they came and began filling the boat so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, their partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. Because from now on, you will be catching men. Now, check this out. Verse 11. Going to come back here. So they pulled their boats up on shore, and they left everything, and they followed him. When Jesus steps into the boat, and they push a little way from the shore, and they go out into the deep, Peter doesn't want to do that. But because you say so, he did it. Because you say so. You see, I believe that, that uh, obedience is key to experiencing God's purpose and blessing in our lives, even when it makes no sense. It made absolutely no sense for Peter to go out as far as they went and put the nets down because it was daytime. You don't catch fish in the daytime. It was too close to shore. Now, last year we were at the Sea of Galilee in 2020, And it was as full as I have ever seen it. And there's something interesting about it, is that you don't have to go very far offshore to get into the deep. There are portions of it, and in the northern part where they were, it can get very deep very quickly. But Peter's thinking in his head, it still doesn't make sense to me. We were here all night, and there was nothing. 1 Corinthians chapter 2.14 says this, The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him and cannot be understood because they are spiritually discerned. Now, let me be very clear. It didn't mean that they couldn't hear Jesus. They could hear him, and they could understand the words that he said. It's just that what he was saying didn't make sense. See, everybody can hear from the Spirit of God. The Bible says the whole world has, the the Spirit has been poured out over the whole world. It's just that until we're born again, And even after we're born again, sometimes we just don't discern. We need the Spirit's help to discern. Why are you telling us to do this right now? See, isn't that just like us? Isn't that like us? It doesn't make sense. I can hear Peter saying, look at Jesus. Uh, I'm the professional here. This is what I do for a living. You're a stonemason. You're a carpenter. You're a teacher. How about if we stay in our lanes? You know, you do what you do. I do what I do. But they did because Jesus said so. They pushed out into the deep, and voila, they got a boatload of fish so big that they had to call Zebedee and partners to come over and help unload it. Question for you this morning. How many of us have missed out on a miracle or an answer to prayer or discover what our purpose is just because we don't get what God is saying to us at that time? The second thing I want us to know today is that delayed Obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. You need to remember that. Here's the thing. When I was 20 years old, some of you have heard this story, but some haven't. But when I was 20 years old, a young man, I was standing at a farmhouse, and I was having my devotion. And as clear as I've ever heard the Spirit of God, he spoke to my heart. And he said, you're going you're gonna to start a Christian radio station. And I was... I was enrolled in school i was a surgical tech i was my 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 desire was to become a physician's assistant but i'm going to tell you at that moment at that very moment i went over to the phone i got the phone book how many remember phone books i mean i am as old as dirt i used a phone book and i found the school that would train me to do what god had called me i'd never done that before in my life but immediately enrolled, finished the course, got my diploma, and I was in a position then that when the phone call came to go to a place that we had never been, never seen, I could say yes. And had I delayed even five minutes, one day, I would not be standing here today having experienced over 40 years in the ministry. 
when G you doing what he says when he says it is the surest way to experience his blessing discovering your purpose and making a difference in this world so when peter they they uh, pushed out they they received from god delayed obedience is is disobedience I've lost my place, so I'm trying to find it. So that I'm you know, trying to fake it here, and I'm like, no, that's page three, page four, page. Nine. I need to be on page five. Okay, so, so the, the miraculous catch. So let me just make a, a comment here about that. So they were obedient; they got the miraculous catch. So, God doesn't waste anything. All right. So have you ever thought about well, why why a boatload of fish? How many of you have seen part of the series called Chosen? It's on TV. It's a new series. Look it up. It's got an app. It's, it's, it's on Up TV. It's just anyway. And it's a series on, on, on Jesus and the disciples. It's great. Costumes are a little funky, but it's great. Okay? It's worth watching. So they happen to be playing this, the, the episode where they push out and they get, how many of you saw it? So they push out into the deep and they get this catch of fish. And so I never really thought about what possibly did they do with it? Did they give the fish to the poor? You know, God's not going to fill that boat and then just let those fish rot, right? Come on. Well, in this episode, what they did was they, they kind of did a backstory. It's plausible. Don't know that it's accurate, but it's plausible that Peter had gotten himself in some tax trouble with the Roman government. And he didn't know how he was going to pay his bills. He was going to lose his house. He was going to lose his boat. going to lose his income. going to lose his family. going to lose everything. But God come along and he called him and demonstrated miraculously that he is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. And in the episode, it shows that they sold the fish, paid the taxes, and now Peter is available to drop his nets and go and follow Jesus. Come on, somebody. It makes sense to me. So when Jesus says, drop your nets, do it. From now on, you're catching fishers of men. You'll be catching people, being fishers of men. Now, immediately, it says they left the boats on land. I'm going to come back to that. They left everything and followed him. Obedience brought God's miraculous provision and discovering his purpose. And tell me, did they make a difference in this world? Yeah, buddy. Come on. So, again, delayed obedience is disobedience. A couple chapters over in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 59 and 60, Jesus is still calling people to come and follow him. And in verses 59 and, and 60, uh, Jesus says to them, he said, follow me. But the man said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead, but you must go first and proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, I've read that. Have you read that? And that sounds a little harsh, doesn't it? Like, why didn't, I mean, Jesus, the man's dad died. Come on. Or did he? See, there are some who think that maybe his dad wasn't that old. Let's Let's again postulate, it's very likely that, let's say his dad's 55 years old. But what he's saying is, is Jesus, when, when my dad has passed, after I've experienced his life, with, then I'll come follow you. When I bury my father, whenever that comes, then I will come and follow you. And Jesus said, look, if he's 55, he may live to be 75. That's 20 years. How are you going to get those 20 years back? You know, there are blessings, 20 years of blessing that are awaiting you by following me expressed in immediate obedience. Come on, somebody. In verse 61 and 62, another one said, I will follow you, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Now, Jesus replied, no one who puts the hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom service. Do you know what happens when you start something and you begin to look backward? How many of you ever plowed with oxen? I don't see any hands. I don't see any hands. You've never, are you kidding me? You've never plowed with a team of oxen? Um, I haven't either. But anyway, but what will happen, what will happen is if you start plowing and you're going this way, and you start looking backwards, it's going to be like driving, looking in the rearview mirror. You're going to begin to drift, see? 
and, and, and if you've just got done plowing this way, and now you're going that way, but you look back, you're going to go and destroy what you have just done. In other words, we've got to cut ties with the past. You've got to cut ties with your past. You cannot drag your past into the future and expect God to be able to do everything that he had in mind. Now, Jesus says, uses this term of whoever sets his hand to the plow and looks back. That sounds vaguely familiar. If you remember in 1 Kings 19, the call of Elisha. Elijah one day was walking uh, down, the, down the path, and he came upon Elisha, and Elisha was plowing, 1 Kings 19, he's plowing with a team of oxen. And Elijah throws his mantle over Elisha's shoulder and says, come follow me. And it says, immediately, Elisha takes the, and he, go, he does go back and say goodbye to mom and dad. I'll give you that, but it's not a protracted thing. And what he does is he goes and he, he, he kills the oxen, and he cuts up the plow, and he cooks the meat, and he has a party. Woohoo! I've been called to ministry. Let's celebrate, everybody. And he uses that, and he, he feeds people with it, and he celebrates. But more important point, what he does is he cuts ties with the past. There's no turning back. He's got nothing to return to. He has burned it up, and it is gone. And, and later down the road, if he comes, has a tough time with Elijah, they're having a bad day, things aren't going the way they, they should, and he thinks, well, I can always go back to plan B. I can always go back to plow in the field. Guess what? There's nothing to go back to. Now, do you remember, I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, but do you remember where it said that, it, that uh, 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 Peter and the other disciples, when Jesus had filled their boats, it says that they, in verse 11 there of Luke chapter 5, remember, it says they brought their boats and they brought them to shore and they dropped their nets. It doesn't say that they sunk their boats. Now, I'm just saying this. I'm saying this is that you have to cut ties with your past or else you'll be tempted to go back when things aren't going the way you think they should. And so if we fast forward to John chapter 21, in John chapter 21, what happened? Jesus is raised from the dead, and uh, the disciples, they saw him, but they still decided they were going to go back up to uh, the Sea of Galilee. And there they are now on the, on the Sea of Galilee. Where'd they get that boat? Where'd they get those nets? Dun, 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 dun. See, verse, that's their plan B. See, that those verses said is that, you know, when Cortez took his men and, and they, were, they were taking island and they, 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 he, he, he thought, well, maybe these guys are going to want to retreat someday. So he told his men, sink the boats. And that way there's no retreat. But we read in... In uh, John chapter 21, verse 3, it says, so they got into the boat. It doesn't say they got into a boat. It said they got into the boat. So was Zebedee, his partner, just watching his boat while he was gone, just in case things went south with Jesus, which they did for a minute? All I'm saying is that it, it, you have to cut ties with your past. You've got to move forward. See, the other thing that Elisha did was he, when he had that fire and he, and he was burning that, it became like an altar. It was a sacrifice. He's saying, God, I'm going to sacrifice the future of this business so that I can have a future in your business. Now, God's not always going to call you to leave your line of work, but you never know. He may change your course and direction. You just need to be ready when he says it to be able to do it and do it when he says it. And doesn't the Bible call us, you and I, to be living sacrifices? You know what they say about living sacrifices, right? They always have the temptation to crawl off the altar. See, when, when, in the Old Testament, when they did sacrifices, they tied those puppies down. Well, they didn't sacrifice puppies, but they, they sacrificed animals. And they tied those animals down. They ain't going anywhere. Because I tell you what, even those animals are smart enough to know, here's an altar, a fire, and a guy with a knife. Oh, no, I ain't sticking around. You know, plus, you know, if it was a goat, they said, hey, Billy left yesterday. He didn't come back. Where, what, the, whoa, whoa. And he went with those guys. <laughs> Be a living sacrifice. Offer yourself wholly and completely to God. The Bible says that that is your spiritual worship. 
See, what happens, here's what happens, is if we, if we don't offer ourselves as living sacrifices, if we don't go all in, the tendency is for us to be what Jesus said, is we're going we're gonna to be serving two masters. We're going to be serving, trying to serve him, and we're going to try to serve our past, or we're going to try to serve him, and we're going to serve uh, my idea, my agenda. And the Bible says that ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to end up hating one of the two. You're going to hate it. And I don't know about you, but there's things in my past that I hate, and I don't ever want to go back and repeat. So the best thing to do is to sink the boats, burn the plow, and just keep moving forward with Jesus. See, Jesus calls Peter, and Peter became, became somebody they never dreamed he'd be and did something he never thought he would do. And that's the blessing that is available to you and I. So this morning, as we're sitting there, What's keeping you from saying yes? Is there anything? Is it your past? Is there something? Ha have you heard the call of God? So somebody said, well, I didn't hear. I was standing in a farmhouse. I wasn't, you know, I didn't see Jesus, uh, you know, on the side of the sea and didn't hear him call. He's called every one of us. All you have to do is read the New Testament, read the book of Ephesians. It says that he has prepared good works for every one of us to do. He did it before you were born. He planned them even before the world was formed and you don't have to understand it and maybe you don't even know him like like he knows you right now but it doesn't matter all you have to do is say yes 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 that's what i want i want that kind of life i want the adventurous life and the only thing that's keeping me from the adventurous life is doing what he said and whatever he said i'm going to do it because you said so you said so, so that I can achieve my purpose, fulfill my destiny, and leave a legacy. Would you bow your head with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we are here today, every heart open before you. We're grateful for the open canopy above us. We thank you that you hear us, Lord. You see our hearts, and you know us. And Father, you understand that at some point it gets really scary when we don't have the discernment or we haven't quite seen exactly what it is you want us to do to just say yes but father some of us remember that that song that says yes lord yes to your will and to your way i'll say yes lord yes i will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart i'll agree and let my answer today be yes, Lord, yes. Father, let none of us, none of our flesh, none of our past, none of our, even our own dreams get in the way because, God, you are so much more. You promised vastly more than more we could ask, dream, or imagine. And so, God, we just want to drop whatever it is that we're holding. If you're holding on to something today, you feel like you're holding on to something that's keeping you from saying yes, would you just drop it? Would you just stop it right now? Because you are holding on to something that is going to keep you from what you really want. It's going to prevent you from grasping onto what it is that God is holding out for you right now. Would you just say yes, Lord? With an open hand, letting go of your past, letting go of your plans, with an open hand then to receive what it is that he has for you. And the very first thing that he has for you is a relationship with him. If you have not yet stepped across the line of faith into a relationship with him, I invite you to do so today. And you simply do it by saying, yes, Lord. He says, will you give me your life? Yes, Lord. Will you trust me today? Yes, Lord. Will you follow me? Yes, Lord. That's all he asks. And it begins a conversation that will take you the rest of eternity to complete. In fact, it'll never end. So do it today in your heart, in your mind. Be at peace. Receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit says He is our peace that goes beyond our human understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, those that are following God that are maybe running into roadblocks, disappointment, thinking about that plan B, Father God, I pray right now that you would just with your confidence and assurance and Holy Spirit discernment help them to see what they can't see right now. Help them to see what they can't see right now. Give them peace right now.
Receive his peace. Receive his peace in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. This morning, if you'd like to hang out, we'll have people around to pray. If you'd like to give a gift, we have people with buckets. You can drop it in. Let me give you one announcement before we go today. May 23rd is Pentecost Sunday, and we are planning for a great celebration. June 6th, great worship day. And we're even, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. I probably shouldn't. But June 6th, we're having a worship night. And we want to prepare our hearts. We want to get ready for the season that God's leading us into. And so how many of you have you version of the Bible? You you version on your on your phone? Okay. Download the app. Uh, it's safe. A half a billion people in the world have done it already. And it brings you all of the Bible. And it also brings you this wonderful plan devotional plan that we're into starting today. It may not quite work out 40 days, but just do whatever you need to finish by May 23rd if you can. But we're going to walk through together as a, as a community, together on our own, but as one through the book of Luke and the book of Acts, taking us right up to Pentecost Sunday. I'm telling you, it's going to get you ready. It's going to be exciting. You're going to learn things, see things, You say, I've read it a hundred times, but guess what? There's something new. God has something new that you haven't seen before. And there's a little devotion that's on there, and it'll encourage your heart each and every day. So we want you to be encouraged. We want you to just experience more of the Holy Spirit. We want this to be a season where you come into a, a greater depth and knowledge and experience with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. God bless you all for coming this morning. Let me pray you out. And then at the end, if you could, we're going to have to put all this stuff back. (laughs) If you've got a few minutes, you can help us. We certainly would appreciate that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you've heard us. You hear our prayers. You love us. We pray this morning, God, that we would take next steps to follow you now, unencumbered. God, I pray that you're going to, and I believe that you're going to provide. Some folk here need provision. They need provision before they can fully step into what you have. So God, fill their boats in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Now go do it in Jesus' name.